up for Arturo and the Silver Bullets. Welcome to Late Night Faith, live at Chapel Roswell. I'm your host, Eric Lee, and we have something special planned for you for the next three Sundays as we find the holiness in the humor of three of America's favorite late night shows. Jimmy Kimmel Live, The Late Show with Jimmy Fallon, excuse me, The Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon, and The Late Show starring Stephen Colbert. You know, Jimmy Fallon, uh, Jimmy Kimmel, has hosted his show for 15 years on ABC. And he's the consummate professional. Never misses a beat. And a little over a year ago, one night on his show, he diverted from his successful formula. He took his monologue time and then some to tell a personal story about the experience he had with his wife when she gave birth to their son. Maybe you saw the video. Maybe you saw it that night or have seen it since. It was a viral video if there ever was one. And so he explained that when his wife gave birth to their son, not long after their baby was born, while they were still in the recovery room, um, they noticed that something was wrong. And so the nurse took him back with their son. The doctors came in, and before long, they were told that their son had a life-threatening heart disease that would require two surgeries, one immediately and then one a couple of months after that. And so during this monologue time on his show, Jimmy Kimmel opened up a little bit of himself and his heart. And pushing back tears, he told about all the people who surrounded and encouraged and supported them. And he took that time on his show to graciously thank them, family members, doctors, nurses, staff at the hospitals who had been there for him. You know, I think it's interesting how... When something happens to us, a struggle or a difficulty that we become attuned to when other people go through similar types of struggles or difficulties. And so one other thing that Jimmy Kimmel did that night on his show is he took that time to mention all the families, parents, children that he'd become aware of who faced similar challenges needs for surgeries and procedures and couldn't afford them. And he said, there's something wrong when parents have to choose whether or not to be able to save their child's life. Then he went on to make reference to, which was at the time a year ago, proposed significant cuts in the federal budget to the National Institutes of Health because, among other things, they help fund and provide procedures like that for families who can't afford them. And so I, I just want to share with you a little bit of a segment of his show that night, April 30th, 2017, and what he said. Jimmy Kimmel spoke up on behalf of the voiceless, people who don't have the platform or the influence that he has. And it really was, in so many ways, a break from what you typically would expect from his show or a show like his. But so meaningful and poignant when he got real about life and about himself and about other people, it was holy. What he did that night is something that we read over and over again in the Old Testament and in the New Testament in the Christian scriptures about what it means to be in this world the way God created us to and calls us to. You know, there's a place in particular specifically where this is addressed in the Old Testament 
in the book of Proverbs in the last chapter, in chapter 31. And I know when you hear chapter 31 of Proverbs, if you've been around the church for any length of time or you, you know, you've gotten into those Bible studies, you recognize that as the chapter where uh, it gives the description of a godly woman or a godly wife. Uh, that picks up at verse 10. The first nine verses are pretty important too. And so in particular, I wanted to read verses 8 and 9 for us this morning. So this is Proverbs chapter 31, verses 8 and 9. And this is how it goes. Speak out on behalf of the voiceless and for the rights of all who are vulnerable. Speak out in order to judge with righteousness and to defend the needy and the poor. And just to give you a little bit of context, chapter 31 of Proverbs says that it's written by a king, King Lemuel. And what he's writing is wisdom or advice that he's been given by his mom, the queen mother. So he's sharing the things that she has taught him. And it actually starts, if you read from verse 1, she specifically gave him advice or instruction about two things, about chasing women and getting drunk. It's the perfect country music song. (laughs) And she warns him. She warns him not to get caught up giving himself over, giving his will, his strength, his position over to fulfill his desires. So be careful, is what she said to him, about how you deal specifically, she said, with women. And on a similar vein, she warned him about alcohol. She said, don't sit around and get drunk. Don't drink away your responsibilities, is actually what she said. She said, never forget that there are people all around you hurting and in need. And if anybody could use a stiff drink, it would be them. And so she opens up for her son, the king, the idea that he needs to be careful and pay attention so that he doesn't get caught up chasing after fulfilling his desires. That, okay, you, you're... Your needs are met. You're provided for. Now what? Now you go after the wants. And you see how much you can get. You see how much and to what extent you can indulge yourself. Because the possibilities of capitalism are endless. Similarly, when she warned him about getting drunk, don't drink away your responsibilities. Don't numb yourself to the plight and the needs of the people around you. Thank God for the wisdom of women in the scriptures and in the church. I threatened sometime to write a book about how women have ruined the church. Um, Right? Tongue in cheek. But... But this is one way I feel like. And I'll say, particularly for our faith tradition as United Methodists, since we ordain women to be pastors of churches and to lead churches, and we don't differentiate between men and women when it comes to leadership roles within the church, ergo, we've given voice to women among us. And and without painting with too broad of a brush or generalizing, because we're all unique and different in our own ways, I will say that I think our church has introduced compassionate wisdom into our leadership that I I think in ages past we've been missing. And so I I thank God for the wisdom of the women who lead our churches and for the wisdom of this woman who gave this advice to her son. And in fact, he's not mentioned anywhere else in the scriptures. And so there is some discussion about, is that even a real person, King Lemuel and his queen mother? Was it supposed to represent Solomon and his mother Bathsheba? Or is it supposed to be just general advice to anyone in a position of influence and power, authority, anyone with a voice to hear this warning? Be careful that you don't get so caught up pursuing your own desires and your own wants and wishes. Be careful that you don't waste this opportunity, ignoring 
the needs and the realities of the lives of the people around you. Instead, this wisdom says, speak up on behalf of the vulnerable. Let your position, let your resources, let your influence and your station in life be for you an opportunity to raise the level for everybody. Speak out so that with righteousness there can be judgment on behalf of the vulnerable, the needy, and the poor. God calls us to a social consciousness to be aware and attuned to the needs and the lives of the people around us. Now, we'll hear much more about what that looks like day to day in our lives later on this morning to have a social consciousness. But right now, we're going to throw it back to Arturo and the Silver Bullets to lead us in worship. So our special guest today is somebody you may not know. Uh, She's the volunteer coordinator here at Roswell United Methodist Church. And having a social consciousness, being aware and speaking up for and on behalf of the least among us, the people in need, is something that's near and dear to her heart. So I asked her to come and share a little bit about why with us today. Would you help me welcome Linda King? So, Linda, like I said, I know that this is something that is near and dear to your heart, and I was wondering if you would just take a minute and tell us why. Sure. Um, My passion really comes from my story. Um, I know all of us have stories and things that have happened to us, but um, I grew up in a single mom home, and um, we lived literally in an alley, and um, My mom didn't finish high school, so she could only get a factory job after my dad left. So she made minimum wage, and we got by the best we could. My mom, um, my grandmother lived with us for a while, and they were devout Christians. We went to a Seventh-day Adventist church regularly, which after I got older, didn't float my boat on Saturdays. So, Um, But without the church, I don't know where I would be. You know, I got free lunches at school. Um, The church sent meals home a lot of Saturdays and um, really held us up. And it was a beautiful model. There weren't organizations like North Fulton Community Charities or the Drake House. So um, we were lucky that we did have a house, but making ends meet was difficult. Um, Even in that situation, my mom... um, she worked at a factory with a lot of, you know, blue-collar workers, and she would still take them food or give them rides, and um, it was just a beautiful model of loving others no matter what you have. You know, it doesn't matter. And so how, and thank you, by the way, for sharing something of yourself and your story with us. Um, so how has that impacted then your, your childhood and your experience growing up How has that impacted your adulthood? When we go out to serve in the community, like yesterday, we served um, at a local hotel here, and many of you went. Thank you. But when I see those moms come out with their kids, I see my mom, and I see me and that kid. And if the church weren't there to lift those people up, where would they be? And so then you go to help, to, to be there. Tell us a little bit more about why, what that means to you when you go, why you do it. You know, we start putting all these things on us as we get older and we go to college and grow up and get a job and, and we're looking for that, you know, success um, and we forget about the people that need us. And being with those people, I feel more at home with them than I do with a lot of people in this church, honestly. Um, 
they're stripped of all of that materialism and the money and the cars, and they are just trying to survive. And we have to figure out how to meet them where they are and let go of our egos. And you told me that you had a conversation with someone recently who was expressing some concerns or doubts for himself about going with you as a part of this team uh, to go be with people in need or who don't have the trappings and, um, that we do. Will you, will you tell us about that conversation? Sure. Um, we had a um, group of Stephen ministers, and we went out on a Friday night to um, serve in our homeless community here. And um, Stephen ministers are trained to mentor one-on-one, -on -one, to sit down and, and be there for somebody. And, um, but normally it's somebody more like you, right? So we were going out to a laundromat, local laundromat, and um, someone was uncomfortable doing that, a Stephen minister. And after we came back, um, he is a person who's active in our church and, um, you know, teaches Sunday school. And it just surprised me. And he said, why are you so comfortable just going up to someone and talking to them? And, you know, I thought about that because I didn't understand that. But it's about meeting those people where they are. We're all God's children. We're all just alike when it comes down to it. And when you walk into a laundromat or a shelter or our family promise or the women at Street Grace, you just have to smile at them and say hi. And somewhere God's going to make a connection because we are connected. And I, and I think the barriers that we perceive that exist between us that may make it difficult to say hello or to smile or to offer a helping hand or, or just to sit and talk, uh, those, those barriers are barriers we made. And Absolutely. They're, they're not of God. And so the willingness to be able to step through one or knock one down and to reach out and get to know somebody that's holy. And to speak up and to act out uh, on behalf of somebody who maybe is vulnerable, marginalized, um, living without, uh, that's holy. And I, I appreciate that that's your life's work, so to speak, here <laughs> these days is to help facilitate that and encourage people to do it. So if there's somebody sitting in the room and they're thinking, okay, I've, as I become aware of needs in our community or elsewhere, and I feel a tug to be involved, but I've got my doubts. I've got my fears. I've got my questions, just like that guy you told us about. What would you say? What would you say to them? I would just offer to, to try. Uh, yesterday, we were just blowing bubbles with a bunch of kids. I mean, everybody loves doing that, right? It, it's easy. Um, and if you're really not comfortable, prayer. I mean, we felt the prayers of the people who were praying for us yesterday. And, and we know that when we go into those places, God shows up every time. And I have story after story about God showing up in our Thanksgiving lunches, in our Family Promise program. Um, just try it. And if you want to ask me about it, I'm always available and willing to talk to anyone about where they might go and serve and their fears, and, and how to challenge yourself and get out of your comfort zone. Okay, and I want to give you the, the last word, the parting shot. If there's anything that we didn't talk about or that is on your heart that you'd like to share, um, I want to give you a chance to do that before we wrap. So um, go ahead. <laughs> wow. Um, just... Love on people the way that God loves on us. I mean, he doesn't judge us. We shouldn't judge each other. And I think a lot of people are scared that the homeless people or the people at the laundromat are looking at us going, oh, they don't know anything about us. That's true. But we can find out. We can find the common ground. You just have to try and don't be afraid. And I want to recommend, Linda, to any and everybody in the room or with us online, if that's you, 
and you're interested, curious, you'd like to find a way that you can be a part of what God is doing in our community and beyond these walls here, so to speak, um, I encourage you to get a hold of Linda King. You can go to the Chapel Roswell website and you can find ways there that you can get involved and serve and help meet the needs of the people around us. And you'll also find Linda's contact information there. So I want to ask if we could just pray together um, sure. before we move on. God, I thank you for Linda, your daughter, my sister. I thank you for how you've been with her her whole life. Whether she's had a lot or a little, she's had you. Amen. She's had the experience and the expression of your love from your church. God, I thank you for how you've worked in that and brought her to the place that she is today. And so now we pray not just for Linda, but for all of us. That we would hear your call to be a part of your work of sharing your love with our neighbors. To speak up and act out on behalf of the vulnerable, the poor, the marginalized. God, we trust you that you bring your kingdom come as we do. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Will you help me thank Linda Amen. for being here with us? Thank you. Okay. So, uh, so one of the funnier things that they do on Jimmy Kimmel Live, it may be not as holy. Lip-sync, no, no, no lip sync. You're fine. Uh, <laughs> one of the funnier things they do is a segment called Mean Tweets, where they have celebrities read mean things that people have tweeted about them. You know, people they would never hear from or meet or recognize, but then they record the celebrities reading those tweets, saying mean things about themselves. And we here at Chapel Roswell thought we'd give that a try. So <laughs> here you go. At SmartGuy48 says, Eric Lee looks like if Zach Galifianakis and a raccoon had a baby. At Lucky Go Happy tweets, I love listening to Kristen Hyden preach. Aww. It reminds me that God really can use anybody. <laughs> At Samantha Cruz says, I am Jay Horton worships like a dandelion in the wind. You know, I'm feeling the spirit. <laughs> At Justin Bieber tweets, never say never unless you're Samantha Cruz talking about her music career. At Tyler Blaylock is stupid and everybody hates him tweets, Tyler Blaylock is stupid and everybody hates him. At Flat Builds tweets, I often wonder what is underneath his hat. I guess I'll have to find out next Easter. Hashtag, he was born with the hat. Have you seen this? Chapel Roswell says, we're giving out water bottles to guests after worship. If this is your first time here, stop by the connection desk and collect your gift today at Nowjean. Hashtag we give the goods. At Chapel Roswell tweets, want to learn more about Chapel Roswell? Meet the pastors and staff and find out what it would mean for you to be a member here? <laughs> Sign up for a free connection lunch on July 29th, August 12th or August 26th at chapelroswell.com backslash connection today hashtag community hashtag when in roswell at most ministries tweets help us pack and deliver sack lunches monday through friday to hunger kids in our community may 29th through august 3rd visit rmc.com forward slash serve to learn more at roswell umc says we're excited to announce new pastors joe mckechnie and melissa mobley's first sunday on campus will be june 24th be ready to give them a warm welcome when they arrive. So there, there's our stab at some mean and not so mean tweets. Uh, if you're new to Chapel Roswell, I hope you heard some of the ways that you can get involved. And see, one of the things that we believe in very strongly in the church is that Jesus embodied this understanding of what it means to be a part of the kingdom of God, to have a social consciousness, to speak up, and act out on behalf 
of the vulnerable among us. Over and over again, he gave examples, whether by the things that he did or the things that he said, not the least of which was that he was willing to give his life so that we could be free, so that we could know life, full, real, holy life. And then to give us his spirit, his Holy Spirit, to be in us, to to move in us and among us, to draw us into this fullness of who God created us to be, not just for ourselves, but for the world, for everyone. And over and over again, very explicitly, he said, serve, give, have compassion, sacrifice. He told a story at the end of the Gospel of Matthew about sheep and goats. And and he said, those of you who have fed the hungry, clothed the naked, visited with the sick and imprisoned, you did that for me. That's where you meet me. It's when you do things like Linda was describing or if you've got the opportunity in the platform like Jimmy Kimmel did that night over a year ago. All of that is a way that we share God's love. I heard a pastor by the name of Francis Chan a few years ago tell a story about these teachings of Jesus. And, um, you know, he wrote the book Crazy Love, was a pastor in California for a long time. Uh, In fact, it's my understanding that the coffee shop up the street is named in part after his book, Crazy Love. But he told this story or gave this example. He said, it's a challenge for him as a pastor to see that people who call themselves Christian don't follow the teachings of Jesus, particularly the ones that are very obvious and concrete regarding how we live with one another and treat each other and care and compassion. And he said, it'd be kind of like if I told my daughter, if I went into her room, which is perpetually a mess, and he said, and I told her, honey, I'd like for you to clean up your room. And then I left. And then she came back to me sometime later and said, dad, I just want you to know, I heard what you said, and it was awesome. I mean, it was powerful. You wanted me to clean my room. I've thought about it over and over and over again. Like I spend my days just meditating on that for me to clean my room. And in fact, my friends came over and we talked about it. Like we all talked about what that would mean to clean my room and how we would do it and what we might do first. I even learned how to say it in Greek. Like I'm with you. Dad, that was amazing. But yet all the while never actually cleaning her room. And he said, how often we deal with the teachings and the examples of Jesus the same way. We hear them, it's clear, and yet we invest our time thinking about it, talking about it, with each other, studying it, memorizing it, but maybe not doing it. (laughs) So what would it mean for you to take the advice of the wisdom of the Proverbs, the teachings of Jesus, to speak up, to stand up, to act up on behalf of the vulnerable, to meet the needs of the hurting, the helpless, the poor around us, knowing that that's godly, It's what Jesus has called us to do and empowered us to do. And that as we do it, people meet Christ and God's kingdom comes. What would it look like for you to be a part of that? Now, maybe you've got a platform and a stage like Jimmy Kimmel and you can have a national impact. Or maybe you've got a little bit of influence right here at home in your circle, wherever that is. And so one final act of worship for us this morning is going to be to come and acknowledge that call that Jesus has put on our lives to care, to speak up on behalf of our brothers and sisters, starting right here in Roswell. And so a tangible thing you can do this morning is you have in mind what God may even be saying to you about, here's how you can get involved, or, hey, you need to contact Linda King. I'm going to ask you in just a minute when Arturo and the Silver Bullets play again, if you would come out of your seat from where you are and grab a rubber band or two and stretch them between the pegs on this board. 
And the, there's letters on here that spell out Roswell because that's our call, to love Roswell. And so we'll fill that in with color as each of our way and collectively our way to say, we hear you. God, we hear you, and we want to be a part of what you're calling us to do. And I'll let you know that at the next Alive in Roswell, at our Chapel Roswell booth, we're going to have a similar one that says love, and we're going to invite the people in our community, our neighbors, our friends, to do the same thing on the board that says love. And so when they're finished, we'll have something together that says love Roswell, knowing that that's what God is calling us to do. So like I said, now we're going to throw it back to Arturo and the Silver Bullets to lead us with some music while we come and demonstrate our worship by putting these rubber bands on the board. Will you come?